earnest hope, and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. I now invite the representatives of the Emperor of Japan and the Japanese government and the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated. <laughs> end of the war, the beginning of another peace, peace if we can solve the problem of 70 million Japanese people. Here's where we clinch our victory or we muff it. Here's our job in Japan. What does a conquering army do with 70 million people? What does a conquering army do with the family of the Japanese soldier? Fathers, brothers, mothers, cousins of the soldier. What do we do with the soldiers themselves, back now in civilian clothes as part of the Japanese family? What to do with these people? People trained to play follow the leader. People trained to follow blindly wherever their leaders led them. People who were led into waging a war so disgusting, so revolting, so obscene, that it turned the stomach of the entire civilized world. What do we do with the Japanese people when the military leaders they followed are gone? They can still make trouble. Or they can make sense. We have decided to make sure they make sense. And that job starts here. Our problems in the brain inside of the Japanese head. There are 70 million of these in Japan. Physically no different than any other brains in the world. Actually all made of exactly the same stuff as ours. These brains, like our brains, can do good things or bad things, all depending on the kind of ideas that are put inside. This kid starts life with the same brain as any other kid. None of them was ever born with a dangerous idea. No child ever said as his very first words, me, I can lick the whole cockeyed world. Ideas are taught to a child as he grows older. Teach him the good things and he learns the good things. When he's taught playful ideas, his brain understands them. Practical ideas, his brain knows how to use them. Artistic ideas, his brain can enjoy them. When he's taught geometry, geography, or geology, he learns them. He can understand chemistry, architecture, engineering, law. Any sensible idea, any modern idea, the Japanese brain, like our brain, can learn when it is taught. And it was beginning to learn these things in an old, backward, superstitious country. While living in this setting, while living in a backward world, while still being taught the old-time stuff, the Japanese brain was starting to learn the new. And it might have made sense, except for one thing. This group had plans, plans for themselves and plans for the Japanese brain. With such a brain, with its mixture of ancient and modern, some very interesting things could be done. A brain that thought in the modern way could be taught to use the latest modern weapons. A brain that also thought in the ancient way could be hopped up to fight with fanatical fury. <laughs> If these men could hop it up, then the sky would be the limit to the things that they could do. They'd gain power, glory, and a great new worldwide empire that they could control as their own if 
They were smart enough to do tricks with a Japanese brain. They were smart enough. They did it in a very roundabout way, through religion. Shinto, just one of several Japanese religions. An old religion, out of date, harmless. It had once been the official religion of Japan, but now a tired religion just lingering along with its dim, hazy, almost forgotten gods. A perfect setup for the warlords to move in on. This was the place they would use to hop up the Japanese brain. This religion would become the mouthpiece for the military gang. They made Shinto the official religion again. They took Shinto over. They made it a place where the people had to listen. They filled up the Shinto religion with hokum and used it to sell the Japanese people war. Sell the people ancient nightmares. Sell the people ancient hatred play up the bloody fairy tales and pagan superstitions. Up from Japan's murky past, bring back the mumbo jumbo. up the emotions of the modern Japanese. That was the warlord's business. Muddle the modern Japanese mind. Hammer the ancient stuff in. Up from the barbarous bygone ages, bring back the ancient Japanese gods of war. Tell them of the glory of the samurai knights of old. Tell them that the soldiers of yesterday are the Japanese gods of today. Tell them that a Japanese warrior never dies play up the myth of the goddess of the sun and over and over and over again keep on telling them and telling them and telling them just this. The sun goddess created the Japanese to rule all the other people of the earth. Tell them not to figure it out. Just tell them the sun goddess wants them to believe it. This is her family. Her family of warrior gods. All one sacred family created to rule the whole world. Created to rule the whole world. Make him bow. Make him say it. Make her bow. Make her say it. Make them bow. Make them say it. Everybody bow. Everybody say it. Created to rule the whole world. When they've bowed enough, when they've said it enough, when they've heard it enough, they'll begin to believe it. Tell it to the school kids. Tell it to the bank clerks. Tell it to the farmers. Then start to drill the school kids. Drill the bank clerks. Drill the farmers. Tell them that they too are like the ancient samurai. Warriors of today, they will be the gods of tomorrow. And the Japanese brain bought a big bill of goods. It bought just exactly what the warlords wanted. Modern ideas and ancient ideas both at the selfsame time. Fanatically convinced that the Japanese family was especially created for one single purpose. To crush, to conquer, and to rule like gods over all the other people of the earth. And they tried it.
We had years of it. Dirty, stinking, heartbreaking years of it. And All because of one idea that was sold to the Japanese brain. That same brain today remains the problem. Our problem. It will cost us time. It will cost us patience. But we are determined that this fact will finally sink in. This is Japan's last war. And we are starting to prove that point by completely destroying their power to make war. There'll be no more Japanese war factory. There'll be no more Japanese warlords. No more Japanese warships. No more Japanese warplanes. But that is the easiest part of our job. Getting rid of their war machine is one thing, but it'll take a lot longer to get rid of their idea. This idea has been hammered into these people's heads. The United States Army can't hammer it out. They and only they can do that for themselves. They and only they can think their way out of this stuff. Our job is to see that they do it. Our job is to watch them while they do it, to watch them for tricks, to slap down any who try to pull tricks. But the honest ones, the sincere ones, the ones who really want to make sense are being given every opportunity they need. At the same time, these people, these honest ones, are looking to us to help them prove that our idea is better than the Japanese idea. These people are going to judge America and all Americans by us. That means we've got another job to do. That job is to be ourselves. By being ourselves, we can prove that what we like to call the American way, or democracy, or just plain old golden rule common sense, is a pretty good way to live. We can prove that most Americans don't believe in pushing people around, even when we happen to be on top. We can prove that most Americans do believe in a fair break for everybody, regardless of race or creed or color. We can show that most Americans believe that religion is a matter of a man's own conscience and not something to be used for a political shakedown or to make trouble or to start wars. And by being ourselves, we can show them that though we're normally an easygoing people, a people who like a good time as well as the next man, maybe even a little more than the next man, just the same, we know what the score is. Because we do. We're kicking out the criminals who spike their religion with propaganda. The big shots will never again boss Japanese thinking through Shinto. We're telling these people they're free now. Free of the jailers who threw their honest thinkers in prison. Free of the thought police who kept them from learning the truth. Now, if they want to read the truth, the truth at last is here for them to read. Now, if they want to speak the truth, there'll be no one around to stop them. Now, if they want to hear the truth, there'll be plenty of truth to hear. When they've read enough truth, when they've heard enough truth, when they've had enough first-hand experience with the truth, they'll be able to lead their own lives. Let them think for themselves, talk for themselves, and educate themselves. Let them start to solve their own problems. This is what their old leaders brought them. Let them develop and follow new leaders. Let them set up whatever form of government they choose, provided it's a form of government that we know will work for peace. We're sticking around until they've shown us, convinced us, that they've got themselves under control. We're sticking around because we take no more chances. We took our big chance with the Japanese. 
We took a chance that the waters of an ocean would protect us. We bet that 6,000 miles of ocean could hold back a dangerous idea. We lost that bet. That bet has been paid by almost every family in America today. That bet has been paid by Springfield, Massachusetts. Montgomery, Alabama. Westfield. Middletown. Dallas. Nashville, Tennessee. Remember that ocean is no protection. Remember why we are here. We're here to make it clear to the Japanese that we are not the kind of people who forget such things overnight. We're here to make it clear to the Japanese brain that we've had enough of this bloody barbaric business to last us from here on in. We're here to make it clear to the Japanese that their time has now come to make sense. Modern, civilized sense. That is our job in Japan.